Hello world, this is Random Fix and today I'm going to show you how to change your oil and the vehicle in this demo is the 2010 Toyota Camry and some of the tricks and tools that I use. We'll be getting access to the under uh, panels of the vehicle by uh, using these plastic ramps right here. I'll have a link to them in the description below and I'll have a link to a video on how you could do it by yourself. This is something I've used for numerous years and I always just lift up the vehicle myself and I'll show you how to do that in that video. So the key to lifting up the vehicle on these ramps is to pull the vehicle in and then go ahead and line the ramps up. Do not try to uh, space them out the way you think they're going to go. You want to go ahead and park the vehicle where you want it to be lifted. You put the ramps in place. You want to put the center of the tire, the center of the ramp. You want to get in the vehicle now, roll down both windows. If you're doing this by yourself, you have a helper. That might be great. I'm going to show you how to do this by yourself. Go we'll have my foot. I'm going to put one foot on the brake and one foot on the gas. And then go to the brake and slowly just bring the gas. Like I said, before you start any oil change, what I like to do is make sure that the vehicle is nice and hot. And I like to open up the, the oil filler cap. So this is removed. I'm going to put this where the hood latch actually goes. In case I happen to leave this off, I want to end up damaging this instead of damaging my motor. This is something that I learned at the shop. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you guys what to do on the bottom side of the motor to get this dirty oil out. So underneath we're going to have to locate our oil pan and this happens to be my oil pan. The previous owner has run it over. You can see it's a little scratched up but it's not leaking and you want to find this. This is going to be your oil drain plug. We're going to have to remove this in order to drain the oil out of this vehicle and we're going to have to find our oil filter or oil filter housing. This Toyota happens to use something like this. This is a uh, oil filter housing uh, removal tool like an oil filter wrench right and it has these teeth my oil drain plug happens to take a 14 millimeter so I start off loosening up my my oil uh, drain plug it's already loose I'm gonna go ahead and use a special tool that I have to take it off the rest of the way oil drain plug Back, I have a, I have a anti-splatter in my oil catch pan, and just boom like that. That way the oil uh, drain and any gasket or anything stays onto here, and the oil is draining right there, and I do not burn myself. It's always a great feeling. One thing I did want to point out is the oil drain plug. I normally have a look like this, right? So a socket will go into it if you're accidentally going to the wrong place and you see where it's got an Allen wrench key or it's a pan that's flat like this. And this is normally going to be your transmission pan. So you want to make sure you don't open up this drain plug instead. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the oil filter out of the housing now. And my pan is underneath. And I'm slowly going back. I'm not using any power tools, guys. You're going to get yourself in some trouble by doing that. Slowly comes off. And there's hot oil in there. So I want to be very careful with this. And if you have the time, you want to go ahead and let this slowly drain out. Right? Just like I'm doing. All right, so I let that drip out slowly, so it's, now it's ready to be removed. It should be empty. One thing I did want to point out, you actually have an oil release uh, valve right here, which you would just put a 3 8 ratchet in and take this out. Uh, I don't really recommend doing that because the little seal in here really goes bad on these Toyotas. Your car might be different, but uh, that's why I have a little bit of a leak. I'm actually going to have to replace that seal today. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and keep on doing this with my hand there's a lot of oil in here I'm gonna tilt this back and all the dirty oil is gonna come out I'm gonna flip this upside down in there let that really drain out clean my hands always have an oil rag nearby that's gonna drain out of there so that little um, oil release plug doesn't want to come out of there so I wrapped it in a, some uh, shop towels put it in a vise didn't over tighten it and I'm going to see if I can get it loose now and there we go so that guy's in there tight he's off now I'm going to go ahead and replace the seal and put it back that's what the inside of it looks like right there all right so I loosened up the oil release valve I'm gonna go replace this seal right in here I'm gonna get it out using a little tiny pick you want to make sure you don't scratch the plastic when you're doing this that comes out of there I'm gonna put a new one in there and I'm also gonna replace this seal right here the brand new one and I could pull that one off when I'm putting it on I've got to be very delicate that it goes in that same groove and then the other thing too is to make sure that I lubricate it with some motor oil before I put it back on the car so I already replaced that seal I'm gonna go ahead and drop in the this seal here and I gotta be very careful not to overstretch this it's been lubricated all the way around on both sides so this is nice and slippery over here now I'm gonna go ahead and make sure my hands are clean I went, went ahead and already cleaned this out using a clean rag. If you have brake cleaner, you can use brake cleaner in there. I'm going to go ahead and insert my new oil filter. New oil filters in. And now I'm going to go slap this back in the car. So I got my new oil filter in. This is lubed up. And I got it in the correct adapter here. You can see that the three teeth go in here. Don't try to do this with the cheap little adapter. I've actually seen them get stuck and uh, you just want to take your time when you're doing this no power tools guys a lot of shops use power tools and I've seen a lot of bad things happen seen this get stuck in there and break into pieces so and we're just gonna go by hand for as much as we can I can get this out of the way just want to show you guys I've been letting the oil uh, just sit there at the bottom I'm gonna open up the drain plug again as I'm putting the oil filter housing in and you can see that oil is still sitting down there so I really want to make sure I get the last bit of dirty oil out that's why it's really nice to do these at home when you can take your time right so I'm just going to take my time and I'm watching it where it is And since I oiled it up, it's going in nice and smooth. I've done this before when I was younger without doing that. And boy, was I wrestling with it. And I had to redo it. So that is actually sitting flush on there. We're looking for that gap right uh, where the, the oil filter meets the, the block. And that's nice and tight. I'm going to go ahead and let the rest of this oil drain out. And uh, see you in a few seconds. Alright guys, it's been over half an hour and I went and changed the oil filter, topped off the rest of the fluids. I still got a couple of drips coming down. So this kind of lets you know those guys that change the oil in 3 seconds or 10 minutes, they can't really get everything out. So if you have the time and the means to do it yourself, uh, do it yourself because you're going to do a really good job. And you're going to make sure nobody over torques anything on your car. And... Uh, doesn't give you any kind of headaches that are completely avoidable so when I'm doing this I actually use a I use a quarter inch uh, this is a 14 millimeter on here and I'm gonna push this out of the way so I can get some good leverage and I really make sure that with this little tiny ratchet that I can't Put too much force down on it when I get a snug and that's it guys I don't go on the end of it I just hold it just like that 
It's nice and tight. I've never had an oil leak because of it. And I can't go really get this wrong. So, all right, before I get all my tools out, this is snug. The oil, oil filter housing is snug. Uh, everything else around the vehicle, I could do a quick inspection. There was a little bit of an oil leak, as you can see. That was from the oil filter housing seal. I went ahead and repla uh, replaced that already. And uh, go ahead and check anything else out while you're underneath there. So the drain plug is back in, the oil filter is back in, uh, and everything's nice and tight. Before we take the car off the rack or uh, start it up, you want to make sure you put oil in right now. It's something uh, you do not want to make this mistake of accidentally going in and cranking the car. So I'm going to go ahead and add the oil. I like to use one of these big mouth uh, funnels on here just so I can pour. My particular car, which is a 2010 Toyota Camry, takes 4.6 quarts. If you guys don't know how much you put in your own vehicle, I'm going to have a link below for you guys for AMS oil. So check that out. I'll have a link to even like something like that if you guys are interested in that. So go ahead and put your, the right amount of oil in. One thing that's nice about these big mouth containers uh, or oil funnels is you can actually leave the the quart of oil in there and gets the last bit out instead of just wasting it and so everything will be nice and, and clean when you do throw it away. It's better for the environment. If you guys don't know where to to uh, recycle your oil, your local uh, auto parts stores uh, recycle it for you for free. So hopefully you guys aren't dumping it anywhere or uh, leaving it in somebody's yard. I've seen people do that just because they don't know where to get rid of it. So now I just go ahead and just leave that in there. So I got about 4.6 in here, uh, uh, quartz. So that's right now. What I want to do is make sure I remove this. Put my uh, oil filler cap on. And uh, before you take the reading of the, of the oil to make sure you got the right amount, you want to make sure you're on a level surface and that the car has been started and run for at least 10 seconds. And I'm going to show you what to watch out for in case you have made a mistake. So we're back in the car and you want to watch for this symbol right here. The symbol right here is red right now to be different on your vehicle. So we want to crank the car for 10 seconds. Now if this symbol doesn't go away when you first crank it and the car is running, turn the motor off as soon as possible and you've made some kind of mistake. The car detected some kind of low oil pressure and uh, th that's something you don't want to see after the car started after the first like two or three seconds. So now that the car is running, I'm going to back it up, put it on level surface and check the oil level and I'll show you guys a little trick that you can use. Now that you got your vehicle on a level surface, you can get an accurate uh, reading on your oil. So to do this, go ahead and put the dipstick in and you want to use a white paper towel to get an accurate reading. My car is still a little low on oil because I'd make sure everything really came out. Um, and what you want to do is you want to get it between the hash marks on there. So mine has this little dimple right over here where my lower thumb is and it has a dimple where my upper thumb is. So if you guys can see that on video, you want to get it right at the top of the upper thumb. So, But yours might have hash marks or a plastic piece. You got to check your owner's manual on, on, on what the vehicle manufacturer said and how they want it inspect it and let me go ahead and show you how to uh, reset the maintenance maintenance required light on this particular vehicle as added bonus all right so your maintenance required light is in that corner over there mine isn't actually on it's this light right here but I'm going to show you guys how to reset it in case yours is so you want to, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and you want to make sure this trip meter right here is on trip A so you can cycle through this using this button. <coughs> Once you're on A, go ahead and hold it down. Toggle the key back like you're going to remove it out of the ignition. And then turn it on where all the dash lights turn on. You'll see that it's winding down right here. And you'll see a bunch of zeros. That means it's reset. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you really enjoyed uh, this video. Give the video a thumbs up. Share it with friends and family. And uh, the description to all uh, of the tools that I use will be below. And check out my other videos.
Let me know if you guys have any comments. Hit the subscribe button. And I really appreciate your continued support.